Jesus shall return again with his Father's glory, with his angel train, for all wreaths of empire meet upon his brow, and our hearts Greet you all, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. As we worship together, let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your holy spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through christ our lord amen and now let us remember that christ died to sin once for all and now he lives to god let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. We take a moment of silence and then we will pray our collect for this day, the third Sunday of the Easter season. Let us pray. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please be seated. Carl will read our first lesson. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. 
To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand and sing our gradual hymn 324, I the Lord of Sea and Sky. Is it time? 
Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While they were talking about what they had heard, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened in their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. As I begin, first of all, let me say what a delight it is to receive visitors this morning. It's wonderful that you're here with us, and to see two wonderful swallows returning uh, to our congregation. Welcome, everyone. And let me explain also, uh, we two guys sitting at the back worked long and hard, like very long and very hard yesterday, to uh, try to set up a new speaker system ready for this morning's worship. Sadly, the new speakers are fitted but are not working. So I will speak up. If you're dependent on, um, on hearing systems, loop system, forget about loop. Lip read me if you can, if you're able. And I will speak up as well as I'm able. And our text, while they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them. The, uh, the, begin, the first words of our Holy Gospel reading this morning. And this morning I want us to focus on reflecting about uh, who are them? Who are they? Jesus stood among them. And while they were talking about this, what is the this that they are talking about? The this and the them, or the they. Well, to put it into context, this is just a, a, a fraction from Luke's 24th Gospel, which is quite a long, uh, 24th chapter of Luke's Gospel. It's quite a long chapter. Because in it, Luke is bringing everything to its conclusion. The uh, crucifixion, the resurrection, the appearance of the disciples, and Jesus going to heaven. Everything is in there. It begins at the tomb, early in the morning. Jesus was dead. And we're told by Luke that they came to the tomb. We're not told who they were, just that they came to the tomb. And then he tells us that there were two men in dazzling clothes. Okay, we can guess 
that these would be angels? Maybe the archangels. How can we know? But there were two men in dazzling clothes. Then Luke tells us that some of them, the women, were terrified. So we're, we're focusing a little bit that there were men and there were women and they were frightened. And then Luke names two or three of them. He says that among the women were Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mothers of James. So we know three of the names. Uh, but then he says that the other women with them went and told this to the apostles. So again, we're going back to generalities. And then he tells us Peter ran to the tomb. So we get him one or two names. Then Luke switches to the road to Emmaus. And he tells us that two of them, again, okay, generalities, were walking and, and talking. He tells us one of them was named Cleopas. And then they met a stranger on the road. And they're full of their news. And they tell the story that some women had come to them and told them that the tomb was empty. They didn't know who it was. It was only when Jesus broke bread that they realized that they'd been talking to the risen Savior. And Luke tells us they rushed back to tell the others. And that's the point where the Holy Gospel joins the narrative now. When they, the two, Cleopas and one other, went to join the others, hidden in the upper room. And they started to share their news and then everything was thrown upside down again. Because through a locked door, suddenly there was Jesus with them. Appearing from nowhere. Is it any wonder that Luke tells us they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost? And in the reaction of Jesus, we see the reaction of any good parent when their children are shocked. He calmed them, he reassured them. And what else do you do? Give them food. Food for the stomach, comfort for the soul. So Jesus, the risen Jesus, was with them and he reassured them and he broke bread with them. And once they were settled, then he explained everything to them in simple words. He charged them to share the good news. And at that point, our Holy Gospel reading finishes. But there are only five verses left, five more sentences left in Luke's Gospel. So let's, let's see it to the end. In these verses, Jesus gives final words to them and then Luke tells us he's carried up to heaven. From that point on, the they become referred to as the disciples. They're no longer just people in a crowd, they are disciples, people who will bear the good news. And then very quickly, they turn from being disciples to apostles, people who will carry the good news, not just in their own families, in their own parish, in their own church, but all around the world. They become disciples and apostles. And Luke tells us that they returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising God. Those are the final words of Luke's gospel. So, let's move in now. I've been stressing a lot about this and they and them. A few were mentioned by name. Cleopas, Peter, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, and Martha the mother of James. There is a reason for it, and it's not because they are particularly good or, or the most special people. It's because Luke didn't just write a gospel, he wrote the Acts of the Apostles as well. And we're told that he wrote the Acts for Theophilus, because he was wanting to convince him to accept the good news. And so what Luke is doing in naming individuals, he's 
he's doing like any good author does, he's introducing the characters. Because Peter, as we heard uh, when Carl read for us, Peter became a key player, a key spokesman, a key apostle in the Acts of the Apostles. Cleopas also comes forward. And Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jesus and Martha the mother of James. So they're not being named because they're any better than the rest. It's to help the reader of Acts to understand better who those individuals are and where they were at key points in the Holy Gospel. Now what does that mean for us? We're 2,000 years later. We're meeting here as a congregation in all saints. We are the they. One or two of us, maybe, would get an individual message, uh, an individual naming if the gospel was being written. Now, who knows? But there is a message for us all from both the Holy Gospel and from the reading from Acts. And there's a message for us as individuals, and there's a message for us as a group. First of all, for us as a group, throughout the whole of the final chapter of Luke, he's pulling everything together for the grand finale. And in the grand finale, we know from, from theater, from opera, from films, in the grand finale, we're disappointed if it isn't everything being pulled together and explained. And Luke is doing that. And what's special about his grand finale is there's no individual star brought forward, apart from Jesus, of course, and even he isn't put forward as something incredible and he's just the Son of God. And he was taken to heaven. And he passed over the responsibility for sharing the good news to them, to those people who were there at that time. And he urged them to be together. Luke tells us they were together as one in the temple, continually giving thanks and praising God. The message for us as a group is that fellowship, sharing and caring are the key to sharing the good news. So, my good people of all saints, this is a message for us. We're stronger together. We're better together. We are more holy together. As individuals, we all have a role to play. But that role has to have a purpose. And the purpose is to produce a more powerful group. A more powerful body of praise to Christ and of witness to Christ. You might have noticed that of late, I very rarely mentioned my, my football team, Darlington. And if I have, it's been a reference to, I took my weekly punishment. Because this season was a dreadful season. But something happened in the middle of the season. First half, they were playing as individuals. Some very good players, but they were playing as individuals. And we got thrashed every week. The worst was 8-0. If you come from Charlie, I'll never speak to you again. Because it, it, was, it was Charlie who beat us. But then something happened. We appointed a new leader. And he stressed to the players the importance of playing as a team. The result was absolutely dramatic. In the last 14 games, they won 10. Yesterday, they won 3-0. And from being absolutely nailed on certainties for relegation, they'll be in the same league again next season. The difference, I'm not wanting to press that, but thank you, God, all the same. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, the reason for mentioning it is to emphasize the worthlessness of us as individuals and the power of us as a group. But, having said that, we still have a role to play as individuals. So finally, let's look to see what message we can gain from the uh, Gospel and the Epistle. 
this morning. If we turn now to the reading from Acts, Luke writing gay, third chapter, very dramatic start. Peter is in the temple talking to the people of the established Jewish church. And his opening words, not in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, no. What are you lot staring at? Actually, you are. It's a bit off budding. What are you lot staring at, he said. How do you feel? Actually, how do you feel then? If you thought I was saying to you, I know how I feel when somebody says, what are you staring at? It's a mixture of embarrassment. And then, I really have to pay attention. Yeah, you know, what was I staring at? Was I staring at them or was my mind a million, million miles away? Peter was drawing the attention of the people to whom he was speaking. He was telling the people of the established church, you know, you got it totally wrong. Remember the Torah? All that you were told in the law and the prophets, it all said that the Messiah would come. It even said that the Messiah would be put to death on the cross. It's all there. He told them, they got it wrong. But he also told them, it's not too late. If you've made a mistake, you can say sorry. You can be forgiven if you turn to Christ. There is the message for us as individuals. Life is not always a bed of roses. Every one of us, at one time or another, has doubts, fears, problems to face. Peter was one of them. He was one of them. He was in the final chapter of, of, of Luke. And the only reason he got to mention by name is because he comes back to appear again in Acts. Peter was one of them. He was one of the group and he witnessed as an individual. And... In his turn, Peter was one of the greatest doubters of them all. For all his fine words, when everything was going well, when the going got tough, at one time or another, Peter ran for the hills. But finally, when he was convinced and reassured by the reality of Christ conquering death, and that this was the purpose of his being with them, he was one of them, one of the disciples, who returned to Jerusalem, was continually praising God in the temple, and who became an apostle. He became an individual who remained part of the group. And as an individual, he did all that he was able to encourage those who were still not understanding to stop staring, open their eyes, open their minds, and believe the good news. His final words in the first reading mean that whatever our doubts, whatever our problems in our lives, it's never too late to regain our hope. His final words, my final words in this homily. Repent therefore, turn to God, your sins will be wiped out. Amen. I invite you to stand if you're able, and we confess our faith in Almighty God in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Uh, please be seated. Maggie will come to lead our prayers of intercession. Father God, long ago, first the faithful women and then the disciples proclaimed the good news of Jesus' resurrection, and the world was changed forever. May our witness be as bold, our love as deep, and our joy and amazement as real, as was theirs when he appeared to them. Hear us now as we pray for the church and the world. Creator God, you gave us a beautiful world to live in and to care for. We know that in many areas we have not cared for it as we should. Yet through the victory of Jesus Christ, we know also that you can restore all things in glory. And so we pray for a change of heart and attitude, an awakening to a better way of living and the courage to reject wrong principles. But this morning, despite the signs of spring we see around us, our hearts are heavy as we watch with grief and horror as the violence in Israel and Gaza and in Ukraine intensifies. We remember that all people are created in the image of God and therefore deserve to be treated with respect and dignity, to live lives free of fear and violence. We pray for those who are mourning, those who are injured, and all those fearing for their safety. We pray for restraint on all sides and renewed efforts towards a just peace for all. We pray that the peace of God will reign, that justice and mercy will bring an end to war and terror. We pray for the freedom of all peoples, that they may live in unity with their neighbours and their humanity be respected, and they can live without fear. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray to you, Lord, for your church throughout the world, that she may bear faithful witness to your generous love and your saving power. We give thanks to the work of Harrow Street Pastors, and we pray for our bishops, Sarah and Lucer, for our vicar, John, for the church wardens and PCC, and for the forthcoming annual parochial church meeting when we review our past year in order to look forward. May we listen to your voice in how we can best serve this local community. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who do not share our Easter joy especially those living in the shadow of darkness and despair, and for those where illness narrows their view of the world. We especially pray for all those who've requested prayer, and in the quietness of our hearts, we raise before you those we know who are in need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Merciful God, we pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them. For friends and family who have died and whose anniversaries we recall. Help us to experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit within us and the fellowship of the church family around us until we are reunited once more in your heavenly kingdom. And we remember today Elizabeth Ruffell, Richard and Alan and their families in their sadness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Faithful God, in the week that lies before us, may we reflect your love in our families, our church and our community, so that the world can see we are followers of Christ and children of the Most High God and draw others into his loving care. Merciful Father, I accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for, for the, the sake of your Son, Son our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.
the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. At all saints, we wave to each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you all. And if you're following from home, peace be with you. Dave, peace be with you. And now as we prepare the table for the Eucharist, we sing our offertory hymn, 310, In Christ Alone. to give you thanks and praise Holy Father, Heavenly King Almighty and Eternal God through Jesus Christ your Son our Lord for he is your living word through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image 
Through him you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. And therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and of wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, it's my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. It's my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and with this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body and blood of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. 
the body and blood of Christ our Lord. At All Saints we receive the Eucharist through the wafer, intincted with the Eucharistic wine in the sign of the cross. We receive the body and blood of Christ. And if you receive the Eucharist in your own home church of whatever denomination, you're welcome to receive the Eucharist with us here at All Saints.
Let us pray. Living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We stand and sing our final hymn, 683, To God with the glory, great things he has done.
peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, be with you who are here and with all those whom you love wherever they may be, today and always. Amen. Please be seated. Very briefly before we conclude, let me, as I did at the beginning, welcome and thank those who are visiting us today, and I hope we haven't put you off. If you are happy with us, please do worship with us. We meet every Wednesday at 10.30 for a said Eucharist, and each Sunday for a Eucharist with hymns, and a suddenly mighty organ again. Dave, well done and thank you. And Dave will be playing for us. And Dave, um, thank you for standing in these last few weeks. It's been absolutely great. Uh, Joshua is back from National Youth Orchestra next week. But David, we will be welcoming you whenever Joshua can't be with us. Thank you very much. I've got one or two notices. I'll try to do them very quickly. Uh, first of all, I mentioned John and Dave worked tirelessly, from literally from dawn till dusk yesterday, to try and get uh, the sound system brought into the 20th, 21st century from the 20th where it had been happily residing for these last 20, 30 years. They did really, really well. Uh, just one thing wouldn't talk to them, and that was the power arm, the one which takes everything from mics and puts it into the speakers. I'm sure they will crack it, but John and Dave already the hugest of thank yous, and we can't wait to hear the finished product. Before they disemboweled the, the can of worms, uh, we did try out the new speakers, and they are incredible. So once we have the new system and the power amp, everything working together, I assure you, I believe, I hope, I pray, we'll have a much improved sound system, even with loop. So uh, I hope the echoing will become a thing of the past. Um, right, the Easter eggs and, and Easter baskets, which the craft ladies spent so much time making, they raised £77 plus gift aid for church funds. So craft ladies, thank you from all our heart. And please record that thanks to the group on Tuesday when they meet. Well done. An example of how when we work together as the All Saints family, we can do so much. We can and we will. If you're going to stay on the boat, we will. Um, quiz is coming up next Saturday. Not too late to book an individual or a family place or even a table. Sue is here this morning. Uh, it's £15 and there's a fish and chip supper included. And the fish and chip supper is huge, I can tell you. The fellowship is great and the spirit is friendly. It's not hyper competitive. So if you'd like some fellowship next Saturday evening, beginning at 7 to 7.30, see Sue Morris or myself as you're leaving, and we'll make sure that you are welcome there. John and Mary, coffee? Virtual coffee? <coughs> it can be. It's okay. Those of you at home, uh, virtual coffee and here, virtual coffee will happen. And I think the last thing I have to announce is that two weeks today, our service will be a little shorter. That means the sermon will be short, so we look forward to that. And at the end of the service, we will have our annual parochial church meeting, where we gather as a family of all saints, we elect two church wardens, and we receive the annual reports. You will actually receive the annual reports before then, electronically. So you'll have the chance to look at them, and then ask any questions, make any comments at the APCM. So that's two weeks today, immediately after our service. Um, and the PCC need to meet very briefly uh, at the end of the service. So just give me five minutes to uh, greet people as they're leaving, and then the PCC will meet very briefly to approve certain reports which will then be circulated to everybody in the congregation. The electoral role is... The I'm coming to you, little girl. You need to put your hand up anyway. You need to have longer. Let me remember the two other things. The electoral role is now open. If you're already on the roll, you don't need to do anything. If you're not and you'd like to become formally a member of All Saints, it doesn't cost anything and it doesn't tie you into anything. But if you'd like to be acknowledged as a member of All Saints, John Abbott 
is our electoral roll officer. Do you have some forms, John? Forms at the back of the church here. Yeah. Right, if you want to. And also, we are open now for nominations for both church wardens and for members of the PCC. Forms are at the at back of the church. So, little girl, was it something different or was it that? That was it, you're right. That is my secretary keeping me right. And I managed, for once, I managed to remember everything. So I think that's it. I hope you have a lovely rest of Sunday. I don't know what you're going to be doing this coming week, but whatever you're going to be doing, whoever you're going to be with, go in peace. Love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.